Hey guys, this video is going to talk about the MCPs that I use every single day to develop apps. Now, the first thing I want to mention is I don't really use behavioral MCPs like sequential thinking or desktop commander or taskmaster. I would use desktop commander if I was using Claude desktop, but I'm specifically talking about Claude code in today's video and the MCPs that I use with that. Now the first one and the main one is actually Bright Data. They're also a sponsor of the channel, but I mean, I get sponsored by someone that I use every day anyway, which is perfect for me. What I use Bright Data for is basically scraping websites. You can use the internal scraping tool on Claude Code. So if I just open up a terminal here and I say WSL the Ubuntu and I say Claude, it's so weird not doing this on Mac. I've been doing this on Mac for like the last week and a half or something. I can say like, look up, the, I don't know, stock price of Tesla plus. So for something like that, it's very, very easy, very, very quick to just use the internal web app. But if you want to do something a little bit more complicated, something like Bright Data is great. Bright Data allows you to get structured information, which includes links and images. Whereas you can do that with um, Claude Desktop, but it has to like scrape all of the HTML itself and like write a little fetch script and you know all that stuff so it's just easier to use something like bright data it's also extremely cheap and you can also um, get away with more scraping because they use proxies so yeah bright data is probably the main mcp that i use every single day now a lot of this information is already on my school community so if you want to join the school community then feel free to check out the first link in the description these are the other MCPs that I actually use. Um, but yeah, the school community is great to get this kind of uh, information in a nice format. So Superbase, I use Superbase um, as my production database. I use SQLite locally as an ORM, which is like using SQLite code to talk to Superbase. It's very, very important to have the Superbase MCP in order to verify information, check information, you know, do SQL migrations from dev to prod, et cetera, et cetera. So Superbase is fantastic for that. That's what I use. I use the Superbase MCP. Now, another one that I use every single day for pretty much the same reason is the Digital Ocean MCP. I use this pretty much every day. Again, you can verify information. It can read uh, logs from uh, your dev or prod, even if you've got a problem with production, you can get it to read the logs. You can set environment variables. So like if you suddenly want to remove BYOK in your app, you can code that and then use the DigitalOcean MCP to set the environment variable. You can launch websites, you can launch apps, you can make changes to your apps. Super, super useful MCP. I probably use DigitalOcean every day as well. Now, the Shopify MCP, this is an interesting one, okay? the What I would compare this to is uh, Context 7, right? I actually don't use Context 7. I'm not a big fan of Context 7. It annoys me. Um, I feel like LLMs don't learn that well from Context 7. I'm not sure why. I don't know what the problem is. But the Shopify MCP, on the other hand, gives access to the GraphQL in Shopify. Really, really, really good... Um, MCP. If you can find an MCP that gives access to documentation for something you want to build, that is how you should do it, right? So if you want to build a WordPress app, look for like a WordPress MCP, but you don't want you don't want one that changes things, right? What you actually want. So this is kind of point, this is kind of useless. This isn't what you want. What I actually want is like a documentation one. So for that, you probably would use Context 7 if they don't have their own um, MCP server. But like what I like to call these is like informational or like, uh, I guess, RAG or something. Um, MCPs, the Shopify MCP is absolutely great for building Shopify apps, right? Because it's, it's fully connected to the Shopify uh, documentation. Now, another one that I use is the Uptash MCP. Um, this just helps with cache management. And without the MCP, it's really complicated and, and annoying. So I highly recommend if you wanna use Redis or Celery or whatever in your apps, then use Uptash for that. Now, special mention to Context 7. I know I just said I don't like it, but you know, it's better than nothing. Although to be fair, saying that it's better than nothing, I often what I've been finding these days is that I just use the um, 
Board Code's own research and just tell it to do really, really in-depth research on the official documentation of a subject. Um, but I do use Context 7 sometimes for things where I think it would be good. Like I just said, WordPress. I think it'll probably be quite good for WordPress um, documentation, for example. Now, the final one I'll mention that has a use case, but I definitely don't use it every day, is Puppeteer. Probably going to spell it incorrectly. You can also use Stagehand if you want. Stage. I was writing H here. Stagehand. Um, both of these, basically, what you can do is you can... And also, I'm going to give two more special mentions to GitHub and Docker. I don't use the MCPs of GitHub and Docker. This is GitHub. This is Docker. But I use the CLI right, the command line interface inside Claude code to run GitHub and run Docker. And then what you can do is through Docker, you can actually use Puppeteer to look at your project on localhost. If I go on localhost, probably I have some weird old code here. Perfect. What you can do is you can use Stagehand to actually look at this and fix it, right? You could say, go through this entire project, scroll through every page and fix any CSS issues that you may find. That can be a lifesaver and a huge time saver in some cases. I'm gonna leave the video there, guys. This is my MCP stack that I'm currently using. I do really, really wanna point out that GitHub and Docker, while they're not MCPs, I use these pretty much every 10 minutes or five minutes when I'm coding something, especially Docker, right? Docker is amazing because you can get it to run its own tests, right? You can say, Okay, so I want you to test the flow, see the output, see if there are any errors. If there are errors, it will already fix them itself and it will pass the iterated code and then it will run it again. And then let's say like, oh, but it's not, it, it, it worked, but let's say it's a decision-making AI um, prompt, right? That says, um, find me relevant, you know, products to the collection kit on, right? And it says there are no relevant products to Kiton, right? What it will do is it will actually see that you have Kiton products and you'll see that it's saying that there are no relevant products to a Kiton collection. It will correct itself again and then push that to the final iteration. Now I found that Claude Code does this automatically when it's running inside Docker. It just seems to understand that, you know, it shouldn't just do a stupid test. Now, one thing I would mention, though, just on, on top of saying that it shouldn't do a stupid test, is that it will sometimes just hard code a test, okay? So you do have to read the code that comes out of Claude code. Even if you're not a coder, you can understand that if it says console log, you know, uh, translated to Spanish, and then the Spanish in the console log, you know that that's a hard coded test, and it's absolutely useless to you. I'm going to leave you the video there, guys. I hope this is helpful. This is my MCP stack. I'm loving this MCP stack. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.